we've been talking about distributed programming and the reason is that we want to learn more about data processing in general. Well, today we combine the two, learning about a data processing framework that distributes across many computers called MapReduce, which is something invented fairly recently in the 2000s, originally at Google by some of the systems researchers there. So before we go into the details of MapReduce, we need to talk a little bit about systems in general. And we'll talk about Unix, the operating system upon which most distributed computing is conducted. So let's talk about systems in general. Well, systems research is a branch of computer science research that enables the development of applications by defining and implementing really important abstractions. So operating systems are a type of system that provide a stable, consistent interface to actual hardware, which is unreliable and inconsistent. So the purpose of the operating system is to make a machine that often fails in various ways as usable as possible. Networks provide a simple, robust data transfer interface through constantly evolving communications infrastructure. And we looked at some of those when we talked about distributed computing last time. Databases are a type of system that provides a declarative interface to software that stores and retrieves information efficiently at scale. So we've been looking at a declarative programming language, the logic programming language, while well, all databases have some sort of declarative language that allows you to query their contents. And distributed systems in general provide a unified interface to a cluster of multiple machines. So you want to treat all the different machines that you're using as one entity and issue commands to the whole thing. And a unifying property of all these effective systems is that they hide complexity through the use of abstraction but they retain the flexibility to allow your computers to do all of the things that they can do. Okay, so as one example of this, we'll look a little bit more at the Unix operating system. The essential features of the Unix operating system and its variants, which include the Mac OS X operating system and Linux and many others, are that you should have one operating system that runs on different hardware which was a new concept back when this was created. So you used to create operating systems for particular machines, but Unix was for a variety of different machines, all of which had common properties. Multitasking was important. Many processes should be able to run concurrently on the same machine, sharing resources. Another innovation of Unix was that it used plain text as the representation of data, as a default. So that means you could inspect all the files that were sitting on your computer and read them as text, as opposed to just bits. And finally, the Unix operating system is built around this idea of modularity, that you'd have lots of different small tools or small applications that can be composed together in order to do useful things. So it all came from this quote from Doug McElroy, who said we should have some ways of coupling together programs like a garden hose. Screw in another segment and it becomes necessary to message, massage data in another way. So what is this talking about? Well, the idea is if you have one program that, let's say, generates some data and another program that formats it and another one that knows how to print it out, we should be able to create all these things independently and then couple them together. And it's very much like functions, except for now we have processes which are ongoing and can take multiple inputs and multi give multiple outputs back. So in the Unix operating system, the input to a process is called standard input. And that's just some textual input that comes in um, one line at a time. And then the output of the process is called standard output. And that's just some more text that comes out. So as you can see, if you have text that comes in and text that comes out, you could chain a bunch of processes together. And then the third, what's called a standard stream, aside from standard input and standard output, is the standard error, which reports issues that happen along the way that you don't want gumming up the output, but you want to be able to inspect. So this would be like warnings about what's going on in the process of processing whatever is coming in. 
Okay, so the standard streams in a Unix-like operating system are very similar to Python iterators. The process can ask for more input, and it can send more output. And it can do this incrementally, so you don't have to have all the input available at once, or generate all the output at once. We can do these kind of piece by piece. Okay, let's take a look. So right now I'm in a directory that holds the website for this course which is just a bunch of text files itself. So if I go in the homework directory, here's where all the homeworks are stored. We have a Python file and an HTML file for each homework. There was the quiz you took, and then there are some solutions in another directory. Okay, so what can we do? Well, there's a command called ls, which can list everything that's in the file. We can give ls a parameter, and then it will only list the things that match that in a particular way. So here's all the files that are homework something.py, where star is a wildcard character that can represent uh, zero or more characters, whatever they are. Okay, so we have one program that can list the contents of a directory. Its output is just text. And we can pipe that text through another program, which takes a line and splits it up into pieces and prints out only some of those pieces. So cut is a program where I can tell it, just grab the first piece, where we know that a piece is separated by a delimiter, the period, at which point it will print out all of these different things without the dot pi at the end, because we cut that off. Okay, what else might we want to cut? Well, let's say we want to get rid of this redundant part. We have hw in front of each, we can use a cut again. This version of cut is going to take all the characters from character number three on, getting rid of characters one and two. Okay, now we have a bunch of numbers, although notice that 10 comes after one, which isn't very helpful. So maybe we want to sort those. And then a dash n says sort them as if they are numeric values, as opposed to an alphabetical order, which is their default sorting order in ls. Okay, so we do all these different pieces, by chaining together a bunch of different commands, each command within these vertical bars called pipes are creating a new process, and the output of this process is piped into the input of this, and the output of that is the input of this, the output of that is the input of this, and finally the output is displayed on the screen. So Python programs can interact with this Unix environment because the built-in input function reads a line from standard input and the built-in print function writes a line to a standard output. So let's look at a demonstration. If I say forever, please print out what you get by adding a space in between each letter of an input line. So if we run x.py, we'll see that whatever I type gets spaced out. Simple enough. Well, when I stop entering input into this, then I get an end of file error. And if we want that to go away, then we would need to have to try to do this while loop. And then when I got to the end of file, I would just stop doing anything. Okay, so now whatever I type, it's spaced out, and when I'm done, it just stops. Okay, so back in the homework directory, I could list everything that's homework something.py, and now I can pipe this through what I have when I python3 execute x.py, and it will space all of those out. There are also values in Python called sys.standardin and sys.standardout that provide access to the Unix standard streams as files. There's also sys.standardair we won't worry about that. Okay, so a Python file is an interface that supports iteration over the lines of the file and also read and write methods. And using these files takes advantage of the operating system standard stream abstraction in that your reads will wait until there's some information available and if you write too fast for the next thing to consume it then that will block as well. Okay, so we can use these by importing sys we can simplify our program. So instead of saying while true, I'll instead write 
for line in sys.standardit. And instead of printing, I'll say sys.standardout.write space.join line. OK, so we don't need that anymore. We actually don't need this end of file handling. That's all part of the program now. And we'll get exactly the same output that we had using these built-in values. One last thing to note. If I want to make sure that I can execute this file directly without writing Python 3, I can tell Unix that this is a kind of program that should be executed with the Python 3 interpreter. By referencing, using this special syntax, the Python 3 that's used in the current environment. Now, if I say that x.py is directly executable, I can now run it without typing Python 3. Python 3 will be run automatically. 3 will be run automatically. And therefore, this will get spaced out as you would expect. And that means that I can not just list Python 3 in this way, but also just run this directly. Such are the wonders of the Unix operating system.